Hello everyone. If you've been following my channel for a while, you've seen many things in this bed over the years. Uh, I had my, my berries in here before. I had uh, bird netting over that. The berries didn't do so well, so we took them out. And then, as you know, you crop rotate. So we move crops around every other year or so. So this year we're gonna do some climbing vegetables such as snow peas, string beans, and cucumbers, which are all like crop climbing vines. So we're gonna put up a lattice right here. Here's how you do it. We got this cattle fence here, which is a heavy gauge galvanized steel fence. Let's do it. Are you filming right now? Yeah, so it's heavy gauge cattle fencing. It will not rust. Although some of the wells might rust, the overall fencing will not rust. And it's heavy enough gauge that it'll last for years and you can actually like weed whack and pull the vines right off at the end of the season. It's a lot easier than using string or rope that might break down after a while. And it's able to hold the heavy weight of like cucumbers that are hanging. The cattle fence is four feet, two inches long. Oh, just over 50 inches. So we'll take that into account. And then the height of the side here, where the two by four will go down it to attach. So we're going to use a 10 foot board to that in half for the sides. Cut the board in half at five feet. And that's just a rough cut, so it doesn't have to be perfect. It's not, not fine carpentry and it's gonna be at the bottom anyway. The bottom of the fence goes to right here. We're gonna mark that off. So the bottom of the fence is right there. So that's where we gotta stop at. Now we're gonna also take into consideration how much space the side of the planter box takes up. So we're going to do an inch and three quarters. So that's how much we want to cut out. We're going to cut an inch and three quarters out of the board. And this is what you're going to be cutting out here. It's hard to write on a, uh, on a pressure treated board because it really always feels wet, especially when it's still fresh. Now I wouldn't recommend doing this, but like this, but since I have a busted knee, this is the best way to do it for me. Once again, that's where the end of the fence is. Locate where you want to put it at. In this case, four and a half inches from the side. That way we can plant, we put plants on this side and we're on this side. Because it's just snow peas, we only need like, we need four inches of soil anyway. So, so we can double the crops up. I want to put it, Four and a half inches, which is right there. Right where I guessed it. I like pre-drill my holes so it doesn't crack the wood. To each his own. The screw is going a lot easier. It's like it's likely a chance of uh, stripping it. I did the top one on an angle going down, and the bottom one on an angle going up, and the middle two are just straight. That is plumb and low. Now you know you got where you, where you want it, the other screw's in. That feels pretty sturdy to me. Alright, are you doing that? Keeps from going that way too. So we did four and a half inches from that side. Four and a half inches from this side. It's just got to repeat the process. There we go. The nail hooks for like a fence. They all were perfect for this job. Here comes Mama Frog Hopper for all you who don't know. Your new regular on the show. Because the planter beds are exactly eight feet, I had to put the supports on the outside of the planter bed, like so. I think they're actually stronger this way. 
cooking up pretty clean. What do you think? 